But yeah, season two seems promising so far. I'm not sure if I really want to watch it though. Either I'll wait for the whole season to come out and watch it as a whole. What the blooming hell was that? Buenos dias or buenas noches, my beautiful people. And yes, I am here to talk about Halo Season 2. And it's really bad. It's not good at all. Some people think otherwise, but to me, it's basically the same song and dance. Give us a little tickle in the balls of stuff we wanted to see, and then the rest is just plain old human drama that we do not care about. Does it hurt? Always having blue balls? Honestly, I feel like the biggest Gumby at the moment. If there was an award for biggest Gumby of the year, I would have won it. So, Halo, for those of you who don't know, was one of the biggest gaming franchises during the early 2000s, mid-2010s probably, until 343 took over. It was just one bad decision after another. They were trying to turn Halo into something else, but none of us fans were having it. So Infinite was the biggest retcon they chose, pretty much abandoning all the current storylines that the fifth one was building up towards but i'm afraid it's too little too late to win the fans back and so also in 2013 we had the tv show announced and steven spielberg was supposed to work on it well honestly he just produced it because i haven't really noticed any of his fingerprints on it well it doesn't matter who was behind it because in all honesty the writing of this story has been garbage in 2023 season one was released and by god it was definitely the worst adaptation of a video game i have seen in quite a while we've already noticed the red flags when the showrunner said we didn't look at the game we'd even play the game and then also announcing that this show will follow a silver timeline which is basically their own timeline where they can do whatever they want without thinking about what the fans would feel about certain events will play out in the show so pretty much disregarding anything that has been built up in the video games so that we can get scenes like this <laughs> Okay. Understandably so, most of the fans hated the first season. Most criticisms is that it's boring or too much drama when it comes to the human stuff and Master Chief being butt-ass naked all the time, hence why he got the nickname Master Cheeks. Easier if you let me help. Down. I which are similar to my criticisms as well. I feel like the Covenant were not a presence at all in the first season. They normally show up at the beginning, a bit in the middle, and then at the end. And the bond between Chief and Cortana was non-existent because most of the time, Master Chief is just telling Cortana to bugger off. And important plot points from the video games have been executed very poorly in the show. Like how the Halo rings are revealed to be weapons of mass destruction. It was revealed when Chief was on the ring and was about to activate the ring. Not until Cortana stopped them and explained what happened and the ring's true intention. Cortana. I've spent the last 12 hours cooped up in here watching you toady about helping that thing get set to slit our throats. Hold on now. He's a friend. Oh, I didn't realize. He's your pal, is he? Your chum? Do you have any idea what that bastard almost made you do? The flood is spreading. If we activate Halo's defenses, we can wipe them out. You have no idea how this ring works, do you? Why the Forerunners built it? Halo doesn't kill Flood, it kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We're all equally edible. The only way to stop the Flood is to starve them to death. And that's exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. While in the show, some hobo that is named after a jackal character in the original canon, but because they don't have the budget, explained to Chief what the ring actually does. Which, how does he know that information? I don't know. Or that humanity are the reclaimers being the only ones able to access to forerunner technology. While in the show, they're just called blessed ones, which are basically special types of humans that can only use the forerunner artifacts. Basically, the chosen one. Because that's what Chief is now. The chosen one. He's not lucky at all. You had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck. A 
along with a covenant human spy called Marquis. She is also a blessed one, which the only reason why this character exists is because budget reasons. They could not have solely covenant scenes because it would cost too much for them to do. So that's why we have a human actress being present in all the covenant scenes. And we got certain weapons and vehicles being present even though they do not fit the aesthetic of the world of Halo. The whole Quan Ha storyline and the character herself is not good. She's just loud, insufferable, and is no more than just an irritation towards the audience. And the music is non-existent. It's just generic sci-fi music instead of, you know, using the actual music from the games. So yeah, overall, season 1 is bad. But how does season 2 hold up? Well, after watching several clips, it really convinced me, oh, maybe the show's different. Because now we got a different showrunner, different writers, and so maybe they learned from their mistakes, and took more from the source material, and hopefully not make the drama for the sake of drama, and also focus on the Covenant conflict. Boy was I a fool. <laughs> <laughs> hey you, yeah you, if you like this video, subscribe, it doesn't cost you a penny, and while you're at it, you can ring that bell, and while you're at that, you can also give that fluffy thumbs up, I appreciate that. Now let's get back to the video. It's hard to talk about where should we start off with season 2, but I guess we can talk about the first 15 minutes of the season, which are by far the best part of the entire show, which starts off pretty casually, where the Spartans help the UNSC evacuate the entire planet of Sanctuary. Bit like Magico, this planet has a bunch of shamans, which, here we go again, back to the mystical bullshit, Alakablam! refusing the UNSC's aid. They make some story how they're the reasons why they're living in sanctuary, now they just don't want to leave, they just want to die with the planet or some bullcrap like that. Anyways, with the Covenant on the way to glass the planet, a higher ranking officer is trying to contact a squad of marines, but no contact since comms relays are down. And so, the Master Chief voluntarily goes after them and bring them home. While we do see Riz and Chief having a sequence where they're just running super fast, you get a good idea what the CGI is like, and oh boy, it is definitely very rough. It seems this season, when the Spartans are doing any kind of action, they tend to use CGI all the time, and it's very noticeable, and it just looks more like a PS3 cutscene. I don't know, maybe it's the higher risk of an actor doing a stunt in a suit, or it could be just laziness to just use CGI, but I just feel like, I feel like they just waste more money just using a digital double for the Spartans to do certain action scenes. If they are worried for that actor's life, then maybe have a stunt double to do the actions for them. They'll be more than happy to do the actions for you. But no, they'd rather use CGI for everything, much like a certain other company that just want to use CGI for everything, even to just a simple costume. <laughs> You had it all and you blew it! Anyways, Master Chief finds the squad, and then not long after get jumped on by a bunch of Sangheili warriors in camouflage. And so one by one, each of them gets sucked into the fog, never to be seen again. And so Chief teams up with this one squad member named Perez. I do appreciate the fact that Master Chief is trying to keep the Marines alive. Because from my experience in playing the games, I always tried my best to keep the marines alive, protecting them from incoming enemies, but sometimes that doesn't end well. So the elites engage with Master Chief again. While that's happening, Perez gets dragged away by one of them, and so Chief chases after her, which I have to admit, when he reloads that shotgun, my god, it's really good. Corporal! definitely how a Spartan should reload a shotgun. But through the power of plot armor, Perez is still alive. But before that, we see Master Chief take on probably five more elites, and the sequence is pretty solid. I would say he pulls out a knife right out of his ass, because when he puts it away, you don't see where the knife is being held at. Not until the final episode where you actually see the knife being holstered in his armor. But the majority of times when he fights, that knife is just comes out of thin air. After that, we got a cool shot of the Arbiter igniting 
using his sword, along with many other elites igniting their energy swords, and we see John ready to fight them, and then next thing you know, they stop, and Chief sees a mysterious figure just look at him and walk away, along with the other elites, because the Covenant fleet have begun glassing the entire planet, and we see Silver Team evacuating everyone as much as they could, and Chief also brings back Perez, and so we see our heroes escape with the pelican while we see the shaman and all of her followers burned alive because they just refuse to leave their home. And Chief finally takes off his helmet and now that they witness at first hand the destructive power of the Covenant. So yeah, that's the first 15 minutes of the season. And I just wanted to talk about that part because it was the best part of the entire show. Just seeing how crazy the action can get when it comes to the hand-to-hand -hand combat between Chief and the elites. Even though the CGI was a bit shoddy, it was really good. And you get the overall atmosphere of the entire setting with the dark, murky clouds. Felt very grounded, very gritty, but they definitely did it to hide the CGI for the elites because you can tell that they didn't look very good. But the whole glassing sequence looked amazing as well. Just seeing the process of it was so cool. And I have to give credit where credit is due. Pablo Schreiber's performance as Master Chief is really good. He doesn't say much. He replies back in a monotone voice. Even with his body language says it all, it just screams and oozes out the Master Chief. Right, they got no idea what's coming. What do you want me to do? We've got 90 I'll minutes. I'll make him a race. What? No, hell no. I can't risk. Sir, let him go. Please. I'll bring them back, sir. That's the and it was cool seeing the grapple shot, even though he used it twice in the entire season. Yes, you heard me twice. But the reason why I want to focus on the first 15 minutes of the show was because that's it. That was the height of the show until probably episode four in some degree, but we'll get to that. And also the finale was somewhat all right in certain aspects of the show. But again, we'll talk more about it later because this plot was just filled with stupidity and incompetence. But yeah, the opening scene was good. Kind of feels like the same song and dance now doesn't it because the first season even that opening sequence was pretty good it's like as if the writing never changed hmm <laughs> So what did I like about season two besides the opening? Well, I would say anything that looks like Halo when it comes to the weapons, the vehicles, the armor looks great. The production design is also not too bad in, in certain aspects. The whole sequence with the flood is actually pretty good. You definitely get the creepy vibes from it. I would say the execution of how the flood get introduced is a totally different story. Some of the action sequences were pretty good, even though there's some parts it was heavily CGI, but it was serviceable. Just the whole sequence alone from Master Chief and the rest of his team are making their way to the main base in Planet Reach during the invasion was also pretty intense. See all the elites coming around left and right for them to shoot them down or throw a grenade, and then seeing a wraith involved was pretty insane. And I gotta say that the fight between Chief and the Arbiter in the finale was pretty cool, not gonna lie. It was CGI heavy. It was very spotty though, but overall it was pretty cool. It just, there wasn't that much of that feeling that you honestly care about both characters, even though the show sort of tried to make you care for the Arbiter and the Chief in some way. That's because we either don't spend enough time with the Arbiter and also with Master Chief, there's just so much wrong with his character of him just being over emotional and dramatic and just somewhat irritating and just behaves like a child most of the time. So it definitely fails on that part. When it comes to the show, make you care about these characters. I do like the character of Atkinson. The actor is probably the best actor they have on the show. He delivers his lines really well. After you understand where he's coming from, where he has to make the hardest choices now that he's running the Spartan program. And he's also acting as head of Oni until later on it is surprise, surprise. Parangoski being the one in charge but I feel like the show should have given more time with us to get to know this character a lot more. We had this whole situation where he had to make the hard choice of putting his father to rest because he requested that he would rather die than have the Covenant have him. Do you remember what we talked about? You asked me to... to don't let them take me alive. 
It's definitely one of those hard moments that you find your relative dying and you know what must be done. And so you have to make that hard choice. But I do like the fact that Ackerson let his father die in peace with a clone of his sister who we find out was part of the Spartan 2 program but did not survive the augmentation. There's someone here to see you, Dad. Oh, Julia. and also has been using it against Catherine Halsey in a way of torturing her, I guess. We do see the procedure of how a Flash clone dies, but the way they die was a bit too comical for my taste. <laughs> And those are really the positives I can honestly give because everything else was just so frustrating to watch as a Halo fan. And I know there might be some things that people who read the novels are going to shout out to me, but my experience are from the games and outside media like the anime Halo Legends and also Forward Onto Dawn and this other one with Spartan Locke. And that's something to keep in mind, that the majority of people that played Halo do not read the books. And the reason why I don't read the books, because I don't have time. That's, that's as simple as it can get. I don't have time, and I'm really a slow reader when it comes to these kinds of books. Dude, this is so dumb. I hate reading. I literally don't know what's going on. I just read over it, and I have no idea what's happening. That's why I collect more comic books and novels. You can call me an idiot all you want, but that's my personal preference, to be honest. Plus, I have learned a lot from Hidden Xperia's YouTube channel with his videos, which I learned quite a bit about Oni, which are very, very scummy organization. If you have not seen this guy's channel, I highly recommend it. He's very informative when it comes to the Halo lore. If I can't read a certain book, I normally learn it off from him. All right, let's keep going with the negatives. I think we're starting to get a certain formula running with the Halo seasons. Normally we get the good stuff that felt like Halo in the first 15 minutes of the season. Then we get another major moment in the middle of the season and then the finale. In between is a whole bunch of nothing because that's what it was. I feel like we were wasting so much time on meaningless drama to the point that I feel like none of our characters were developed. Like what was John's character arc? It was not to be a machine even though wasn't that the point of season one he began to develop emotional feelings or is it that he missed Cortana and he can't really live without her or survive without her it really comes off as uh, really weird especially when Maki asked Cortana what does John mean to her what are you I'm Cortana the most advanced artificial no what are you to him Master Chief? I... We work together. Like a jealous ex-girlfriend asking the current girlfriend, Oh, what is, what's going on here? <laughs> because I, I can't tell you what happened to any of the characters. We can start off with Perez. I was pretty excited that we got a Marine in the cast. Maybe we can see the Marine's point of view of how crazy it is or intense it is since you're just a human. And it maybe would lead her to ODST, which this timeline has not introduced at all. And I don't think they'll ever will. They'll probably make their own dumbass version of it but instead she ends up becoming a spartan 3 which how does that work she left reach and then five or six days later she just joined the spartan 3 program off screen i would have liked to see how the procedure works when it comes to becoming a spartan 3 because from whatever we saw in the finale of how they are like on the battlefield they suck the spartan 3s suck they just easily get taken down by plasma weapons which let's Let's go there. Why are there no shields anymore? Season 1 showed that the armors had shields. Now it's just non-existent anymore, or I guess if the plot commands it. I guess it's to rise tension when there's no shields at all so that our Spartans can get shot easy. <laughs> Yeah, you suck. Yeah, you just fucking suck. Which, what's the point of Mjolnir armor not functioning how it should in the games? But I guess that's why they took away Chief and the rest of Silver Team's armor during the Fall of Reach. So the whole advertisement for Season 2 was the Fall of Reach, alright? 
That's what they right, advertise. So reach is coming now. Yeah, reach fold already. So the fall of reach happened in one episode. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, because they want to focus more on the human drama between Master Chief and Oni. So and that's what I forgot to tell you. They killed off Keys before they even made it to Halo. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg. You know, when that episode was starting, I was getting excited for them to put on the armor, and then we get cool action set pieces with them in the armor, fighting the Covenant during the fall of Reach. But then we find out that Oni has taken their armor, and I was just flabbergasted. I can't believe they actually used their heads for once to actually find an excuse for our heroes not to wear the armor. Out of all situations, during the fall of Reach, and I guess it was easier to kill off Venic that way, but who cares? It would have looked better if we had them wear the armor. And it would have been good marketing to show that off. But no, you decided to do that. Why? How does that benefit you at all? It just pisses us fans off even more. And for those who just gobbling up this slop, really, really raise your standards, guys. Seriously. We cannot accept mediocrity like this. Because we have to suffer through the next three episodes of Chief not wearing his armor, and then him just over dramatic acting all the time. I don't know why he continues to do this when he has the helmet on and when he delivers the lines very monotone and he looks very stoic. I've seen it happen maybe a couple times without the armor, but that's where Pablo really needs to nail. Not just the over facial expressions, dramatic stuff, all right? It is such a headache and eye roll to watch. Pablo shines when he's the stoic silent type and just gives off some one-liners and small replies I think they're gone no they're close how do you know the smell never been in a church before have you in joy we're not done find your faith Spartan I have seen your death it comes soon. Chief, let's go. That's where he shines. Cortana is always good. I mean, she's voiced by Jen Taylor, but they have an on-set actress playing her now, and uh, that haircut, man. I guess it was cheaper to have an on-set actress Plus, it's easier for the actors to actually talk to someone rather than talking to a tennis ball. But I do hope that next season they fix that haircut because that's the Karen cut. I'm sorry. It's just too weird. At first glance, it looks a little basic. She has a let me talk to your manager haircut. And she hardly showed up in the first half of season two and she showed up a bit more in the second half. But I was hoping that we get to see more of Chief and Cortana's relationship sort of improve since now they're no longer bickering. But no, it seems like the show assumed that's already happened, that they're best buddies now because Chief just misses her all the time. That weird hologram brothel place where he just turned the brothel lady into Cortana. And he was talking to her like as if he was talking to Cortana, which was a really weird sequence, man. But yeah, they act like the development is there, where the first season, it was just John telling Cortana to shut up and go away. So this relationship does not get earned at all, but it acts like it does, even though they were separated for majority of the season until the finale. We also got Dr. Halsey, which th there really is not much to say. She was basically the main antagonist for the first season, and now she's got really nothing to do but help her daughter try to figure out to get into this forerunner Ruin, which I will say really looks good by the way, completely ripped from the games and it's a great set. But after that she gets infected and then gets cryosleeped. I guess we won't see her for a long time. Ma Key, I cannot believe that this bitch came back. Oh, for fuck's sakes. That this bitch came back. How? Even Kai said that she shot Maki in the back, so she should be dead. But the show never bothered to explain how did she survive. But anyways, she's back. 
being the crazy ex-girlfriend to John, and really, you could have really just removed her from the show, wouldn't change a bit. She makes this sort of delivery that she's a demon as well. So much you have yet to know. What don't I know? That I'm a demon too. Like John? Was that supposed to be badass? I'm just still shouting out how you're still alive. She just takes time away from the Covenant. Like we had this really cool scene where the Arbiter is fighting the priest and other elites and it looked pretty cool but then the camera focuses on Maki with her struggle and I'm going I don't care. Show me the Arbiter being badass. It's that same trope with Transformers where the camera focuses on human running away from the actual thing that the audience pays to see, which is giant robots killing each other. And I'm pretty sure Halo fans would like to see Sangheelis fight against Sangheelis, but we gotta focus on Maki because budget reasons. Which sucks because I would have liked to know more about this Arbiter. It's not the same Arbiter from the games. I didn't notice it was him until Maki had to say it out to us because the elite armor collars are just off and the armors are always wrong as well. I swear there were some elites that looked similar to the video game version of of the Arbiter's design. And we don't know which rank some of these elites are. Most of them are this weird grayish blue color. When you look at an elite in the games, you know exactly what rank they were. The gold ones were the leaders. And it was such vibrant colors with each of the Coven's design. Here it's just all murky colors and it's just hard to see them sometimes when it comes to hiding them in the fogs. And then there's so much going on in the action scene, you don't know what's happening. And so when the Arbiter's death happens, I don't feel anything for this. You never gave me enough time to know this character. Whatever we know about this character, Maki just tells the audience about it. Without the show, I don't know, showing us what he's been through, maybe through flashbacks or something like that. But I think it was a mistake for the Coven to speak in an alien language. And so sometimes the language that they speak is a bit distracting because they make these weird noises. And even when Maki says some certain words, it just comes off as funny. <laughs> English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Plus, I know that normies just hate reading subtitles. It's true. You know, there are people who just don't want to read subtitles. And maybe just have the Covenant speak English, since in the games they all speak English, because it was easier for the gamers to understand and follow what's going on. The live action Transformers movies did that as well with their own alien language. Seeing Megatron is very cool. And then we created this alien language. Fish not the Bomilicandesethas. <laughs> but what does it mean? God damn, it's starting to sound like they both had the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> and this season, they reduced the Covenant. Where are the grunts? Where are the hunters? You teased us with a leg, and you see them going on and swarming the UNSC ships in their worm forms, but we don't get to see Chief fight a hunter, and we get one brute. It's not even a chieftain, I think. He just looks like generic brute. Yet again, the Covenant are in the sidelines because the main conflict is Master Chief versus Oni. That's what the storyline was, Master Chief up against Oni, and that the big bad is Parangoski, the worst antagonist in the entire show. Look, the actress does what she can, but she just cannot be intimidating. I could tell you so many reasons why she's not intimidating, but then you're gonna call me a racist. First of all, Indian people are so nice, and they're so sweet. I can't see it. You know, you're gonna rob a bank. You need authority. You need to come in there, guns blazing. I said, get your ass on the ground now! I can't imagine. Would you please take the money? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I am talking to you. Forget this. I'm out of here. I don't need this. That depends. What are you prepared to do for me? You know, I've always found it helps to know what my people are thinking, especially when I'm not there. But it's true. She just does not sound intimidating. She does not command the room when she's in. Heck, you put Charles Dance in there, he commands the room. Curiosities on the far side of the world are no threat to us. But how do we know these dragons are just curiosities and not the beasts that brought the whole world to heal? Because we have been told as much by the many experts who serve the realm by counseling the king on matters about which he knows nothing. But I haven't been counseled. You are being counseled at this very moment. 
This lady doesn't. So I'm sorry, but Parangoski is one of the worst characters in the show. And I'm glad she's dead because that means we don't have to deal with any Oni drama ever again in season three. But I'm pretty sure they'll make some excuse for Oni's return. It started out fun with the whole Ackardson being involved. I find that being the most interesting when it comes to the Oni stuff. But then as it progressed, it just took the attention away from the Covenant. And I didn't want that. I don't care about that. I care about the Covenant con conflict because that was the point of Halo was humanity united as one to fight a common enemy and then in the third game it applies with both the humans and the elites they step their differences aside to fight a common foe which is the prophet of truth and then later on the flood why is that so hard to get right and i doubt we're going to get that kind of alliance in this timeline because we got the flood out and even that was executed very poorly don't get me wrong they're done pretty right with the whole zombie thing and the infection and you see the tentacles and their skin bulging that was creepy oh that was good it's just it took an idiot to just touch the flood spore an idiot named janine and when miranda asked her did you touch it she's like a little child going no i didn't touch it i didn't do anything i didn't do that Earlier. i don't think so so you didn't touch that what is it did you touch it or not no of course not are you joking janine Janine was patient zero for the flood to return. Oh, like a little container? And so Halsey and Miranda take it back to the lab, study it, and Miranda opens it. It's in contain it's in containment, so it's in a glass box. But everyone yeah. everyone who played the games know exactly what that is, which is flood spores containing everything. Like, you shouldn't be messing with that. But she kept it containment just in case, which that's fine. So, in the show, they introduced this random character named Janine. Janine! Yeah, and That's she, in, in the finale, keep in mind, Janine is a scientist, a biologist, like Miranda. Yeah. And she asked Janine, did you touch it? She said, no. So you didn't touch it? No, I didn't. Okay. And then they play this romantic comedy music in the background as she slowly turns into the flood. Yeah, so Janine, like a child, acts like, no, I didn't touch the flood, when she clearly did. I guess to be funny or something, they just play this weird, light-hearted romance music, like, bo 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 while she's turning into flood and just st start infecting people and killing people. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. Like Janine. Nice. Like yeah, when you when you think of flood in the TV show, you just think of Janine now, a character that just they just introduced in the finale, who is patient zero for the flood. And that's again, hilarious. and again, going back to oh, humanity is dumb. So yeah, so humans are the reason the flood happened. <laughs> so it's the humanity. Yeah. Humanity, stupid. And then we get this whole happy-go-lucky music, and then it all goes to shit. It's pretty generic. You've seen it in other zombie-like media. And I much prefer how it got introduced in the game. But it's very telling that the showrunners just want to rush that. I felt so much happen in the finale, because they just waste so much time with the whole Oni stuff in the previous episodes. And even more time wasted on the whole Soren family drama and Quan Ha. Which, let's get to that. I do not care about Soren's family. Don't care about his son. I don't care about his wife being a badass and all. I just don't care. All the stuff in the rubble is not Halo. Just from the opening sequence that we saw with that wrestling match was embarrassing. <laughs> Even when Soren's wife gets infected, it's supposed to be sad and dramatic. Again, I don't care. I never cared about this storyline, nor should I ever will. I love you both. No! play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. And Quan Ha. Why is she still in the show? Why is Quan Ha still in this goddamn show? Nobody liked her. I skipped episode 7 because I don't give a shit about Magical and her. The best part about this season is that Magical got glassed. Why? 
while you deployed, we lost Madrigal. Good riddance. And then all of a sudden, she becomes an Assassin's Creed? She just murders everyone without any effort at all. Where the fuck did that came from? And I really thought the show was going to reward me of her getting killed by the flood. And next thing you know, she's tied in with this mystical bullshit. Alakablam! With her ancestors protecting her from the flood. So they were able to freeze them in place and so she can get away. Go. I can't hold them for long. This is the end. What? I give you one thing to do. One thing to do and you drop the ball on that. You can tell that Quan Ha had nothing to do. Why keep her alive? Just give us that horrific scene of her getting infected by the flood and it would be gross and disgusting, but it would also be enjoyable for us who just freaking hates this character. Nobody likes Quan Ha. She can piss right off. <sighs> this show is ass. There's really nothing to look forward to in Season 3. The Flood have taken over Onyx site, Master Chief goes after Marquis and meets with the Monitor, and I don't know why we couldn't bring back the original voice actor, but this voice is okay. And now we finally journey into the Halo itself, and it would be cool if we get to see all the different biomes of the ring, but why should I give faith to this show? Even though we got a new showrunner, new writers, they just done the same thing. They gave us important moments which happened in the beginning, middle, end of the season, and then in between is just a bunch of nonsense drama that we didn't ask for, and that the main focus, which is the Covenant conflict, is in the background while we focus on some political conspiracy theory stuff. I think Halo would have worked better as a movie. It just shows that Halo as a TV show just doesn't work because it seems like the new showrunner does care about the games, but it seems like he was just forced to add in all the Soren stuff and Quan Ha stuff for the sake of it. I just I don't understand. The action is good, but the fact that you had to make excuses, story reasons why the characters couldn't wear their armor was just a big slap in the face. And then Chief just doesn't wear his armor for most of the season. Again, I understand he can take his helmet off when he's not in combat, but far out, man. Do we really have to deal with that every single time? The only positive is that we don't get to see his ass cheeks. It does seem the numbers for the show is actually doing pretty well so a third season seems possible i don't know man i think more and more fans who try to have faith in the show just keeps getting let down fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me but it's not gonna stop we're gonna get heaps of video game adaptations and probably majority of them just won't capture the magic that we experience in the games they'll just put a bunch of member berries and then make their own story up because it's their story that they want to tell. Even though it's an inferior version or it just sounds dumb or it's executed poorly and it won't fit in the world that they're adapting from the original IP. It just won't fit. Let's just hope that the Fallout TV series isn't as bad as this. Because if it is, holy cow man, we're in for a decade. Anyways, I'm done. What do you guys think of Halo Season 2? Do you think it's a big improvement from Season 1 or did you expect it more? And are you looking forward to Season 3 or you think they should just pull out the plug. And are you excited for the Fallout TV series? Comment down below, let me know. I appreciate you guys listening all the way. And for that, I wish you guys a good day or a good night. Ciao. Your boy has no skills.